Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create an in-cell chart for your pivot tables. Now, after we create a pivot table, you may have the inclination to take that data and create a separate chart. But you can also create an in-cell chart, and it's, though limited, it does give you an idea of what kind of visualization you can do with a pivot table. Now, this is going to be done with conditional formatting, and the chart that I'm going to use is a bar chart. So you can see here, there's these bar charts that indicate uh, the level of comparison between each of these regions. Uh, these are probably product items and the quantity sold within each region, north, uh, west, south, and east. Now I'll show you how to create something like this. Let's go into our sheet. Now I have this sheet of data. It's about uh, a little over 30 records. And I'll turn this into a pivot table first. So I can click anywhere within this range of data, go to insert and pivot table. I'll just put the pivot table on a new worksheet. Click OK. I'll just accept those defaults. The product, I'm going to have that as the first uh, product, first attribute in this rows. Then actually, I think I'll put region first. So I'll, I'll take region and make it above product here. You can see the green line. So that shows up first. We have a region, we have a product, and then I'll put quantity sold in the values, right? So we have it here. What I generally like to do is not keep it in this compact, compact form. When you create a pivot table, initially what it does is it puts it into a compact form layout. Usually I like to have it in a tablet form layout. It makes it a little bit easier to read. And this is probably one of my preferred uh, layouts. Once this is set, all you need to do is select your range of cells here and go to home, conditional formatting, choose the data bars, and I'll just choose the gradient fill here. Now you notice that when I chose that, I, you would have thought that it has taken and also included the other ones to give me my my values here, but it doesn't. There are some things that you can configure to let it do that, and if I go under here in the formatting options, it lets you select it. So you can do the selected cells, we can do the sum of quantity sold, and here in this option, I chose I would choose the uh, sum of quantity sold for the product. So it will do the comparison and create the conditional format for the product. So if I click on that, you now you notice that that's taken care of and that's gone. Now, one thing to consider is the way that it initially takes the conditional format and charts these little data bars is it depends on the first cell that you select. So in this instance, I selected this cell, but it picked it up as the east. And that's why it picked up everything for east or, or everything for the region right? And I just had to go in here and uh, select my options here. So if I selected this one, it would pick, uh, let's see, it would pick the sum of quantity sold. And basically, it's just doing it on this particular field. Or if I select it, select, select it cells, it's going to do it based on the region here. So there's a couple options that you can play with here. This is probably the one I would prefer. And if I wanted to show, for example, what I had earlier here, right I had earlier I had I included the total what I would need to do is probably oops let me go back in the sheet 3 I would probably need to adjust some things first and in this particular instance let me undo that let's go and click on clearing the rules let's clear the entire sheet rules and in this instance I would probably need to select or I'd select Let's select from the bottom first and go up here and go to conditional formatting. Go, go to my data bars, click on that. Now I have my comparison, but it's based on uh, the grand total here, which is probably not a good idea. But let's say if I reduce or I uh, collapse this field, let's go to analyze and collapse everything. You would see it gave me a comparison. And this is really actually not a good comparison when you think about it. We have our total here, which is greater than that, all of that. And that doesn't really work out too well. So let's deselect that. Let's in expand it. And again, clear my conditional formatting, clear my rules, entire sheet. One thing that might help in terms of getting this particular setting here 
is to turn it back into compact form. So if I select on my pivot table, go under design and go back to compact form, what happens is if I select my initial entry here and go to home, go to conditional formatting and then select my data bars, now you notice that it's included that together. And all I need to do here now is just go under design and go to report layout and put it into tabular format and now you'll notice that I have my entries here for everything. So if I just wanted to see it at a higher level, I can collapse those fields, go to analyze and collapse those fields. And you can, I can see that my West particular, my West division is selling more based on here visually. Or if I wanted to kind of just look at it in detail, I would ex oops, expand those fields and I can see for my West division, which one is selling the most? That's going to be item three. This kind of gives you an idea visually instead of kind of having to look at the numbers here. So there's some in charting information that we can use in our pivot table. And it just makes it a little bit easier to quickly identify uh, which particular values have a lot of uh, weight. And it gives some color to your pivot table where you don't have to take that pivot table and turn it into a pivot chart or its own chart. You can actually do it within the pivot table itself and that's done with conditional formatting. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.